Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is August 16, 2024. Here is another weekly wrap, weekly edition. So we had a fantastic bounce this week. Let's just start with S&P 500 weekly chart. And as we talked last week, um, I know lots of people actually were kind of like anxious last week about market volatility. Uh, but we had a fantastic move. Actually, that was kind of like a beyond my expectation. I didn't see this bounce is going to continue like this. And um, right now, we are kind of like getting back to the bullish momentum. So there is nothing wrong with the weekly chart. Um, we just got a bear reversal, actually bull reversal to the upside, exactly the same level that happened in April. So April, we just had a bull reversal here. Uh, we kind of like capitulated a bit more, um, uh, getting below SMA 20 on a weekly basis. But this week, we had a very nice bounce. And uh, right now, market is just getting back above uh, 55, 50, um, uh, which is a very important uh, resistance point for the market. However, I believe still, even if there is going to be a less likely scenario, if we get to new all-time high, that's going to be kind of like the rolling wave uh, to the downside. So it's kind of like a rolling top scenario that I'm thinking of. Even if we get into this new all-time high in later August, we're going to see some kind of like a volatility down the road. And if we are forming this pattern, that would be kind of like the mother of a bearish pattern on the top for S&P 500 in a weekly chart. And lots of people actually were looking for this. So I've seen like a lots of videos, lots of uh, uh, X account, like at YouTube, they're kind of like a, forming another new all-time high, then getting back to the downside. Regardless of if you're getting to new all-time high or if you're just uh, getting some kind of like a higher, uh, lower high scenario, and then we are getting to the downside, I should say still November, October, and September is gonna be very, very volatile months for the market. So we are not done yet, folks. That's what I'm saying. Uh, we need to be prudent. We need to be very, very cautious, especially when we are seeing some kind of like a this volatility four weeks down and then two weeks up, and then um, very, very a large high swing from the upside to the downside. This means the volatility is not over yet. And uh, when we are getting to overbought condition again for a stochastic in weekly uh, candle, we should expect some kind of like a downside move again, getting back to the market. Moving on to the daily charts, the daily chart, we just uh, got kind of like a, um, a, a kind of like a sellers are getting back here after yesterday, nice search to the upside. Still, there is a positive candle. But this is a very, very important level for S&P 500, which is 55.50. And uh, this is the level that I was pointing out uh, two weeks uh, last week, actually, video that bounce confirmed S&P 500 is heading or leading to 55.50. And that was kind of like a very kind of like absorbed <laughs> prediction. But based on last week price action, we just had a very, very sharp move to the upside. There is going to be a scenario that we can see some kind of like a pullback to this level, which is going to be 5,400. And if it holds, that's going to be kind of like a nice inverse head and shoulder or reverse head and shoulder to the upside. If you get there, that is that is very bullish signal for the market. But I'm not sure even if we get through and then getting bounced and then getting back to the new all-time high. Um, I'm kind of like leaning into this scenario that we are going to get some kind of like a corrective move next week. And then we will see a bounce uh, last week of August. And always September is going to be volatile. So I'm not looking for a bullish September. I was looking for a bullish August, especially second week and third week of August, but uh, nothing um, in September, October. So if it changes, I'm going to change my analysis. And I'm going to be first one on the roof that yelling that I changed my analysis. But right now, I'm kind of like, a, it's it's going above my expectation or kind of, I should say, beyond my expectation, this rally. But this rally doesn't mean that we are getting back to kind of like a very, very safe side. I think everyone needs to be careful. If you see a stochastic momentum index and also if you see some kind of like this negative divergence on the top, this means the bears are going to get back again soon. So 
how strong they're going to stretch the market down. We will see next week. Moving on to NASDAQ, which was kind of like a leader in this uh, move to the upside. However, the price is kind of like a lagging compared to S&P 500. If you go to weekly chart, so weekly chart, we just got more overstretched to the downside, pretty close to over stalled condition, which is a bullish signal if you get a, bear, a bull reversal. And we got a bull reversal last week. And this week we just confirmed. And if you're getting to the upside still, there's gonna be a scenario that we are getting to 19,847. So that's the area still, that's gonna be on the plate. But after that, I should say everyone needs to be careful because NASDAQ can go down here to 18,000 level again. So if it goes below this box, I should say NASDAQ is gonna just stay going all the way down to here uh, with no mercy to bulls. But there are lots of support here. There are lots of institution money still forming kind of like a support for NASDAQ. But remember, if it goes down, even with this strong move to the upside, so we just had a three weeks uptick and then getting back to the downside. And that happens in April, May, 2022. And also if this happens again with a nice rally to the upside, getting back to the bear side in August, 2022. So this is kind of like a two year cycle that we are right now heading into. And we just got a very nice top information in July, getting back to August top. And if it gets a lower high in August, then September, October could be a negative month for NASDAQ. I think everyone needs to be careful on that one. Moving on to the daily chart. So here's the daily chart. We just got a nice negative bear reversal to the downside, negative uh, hidden divergence. And also here is a stochastic momentum. We just got into overbought condition while RSI just barely above 50%, which means still bears can take control and then getting back to the downside. However, if we set up higher low here, while we are getting to a bull reversal pattern again, we should see some kind of like a moving forward to the upside, still not convinced that we are gonna take out this high. So everyone needs to be careful and be patient. Even with this rally, I know everyone is talking about like, hey Ali, breakout is here. What are you talking about? Yes, breakout needs to go above the previous high, which made this low. So we didn't get above this. And when we hit here, so we're gonna just see a doji bar. So we will see how it goes with the market. So pullback, no surprise. We're gonna see how much it's gonna stretch down. Dow, uh, moving on to the weekly chart first for Dow. Um, Dow had a fantastic move, fantastic week. It didn't get to oversold condition at all. So it's just like getting back to the upside. And this is a nice, a kind of like a lower, uh, higher low, higher high. And now we are just getting back to the upside. This is a nice dragonfly doji, nice confirmation, great reversal. And we're just like getting back potentially to new all time high to 42,000. It's gonna be kind of like a possible scenario, especially when everyone is piling money into heavy value names. The reason is um, the fear of recession is serious and I'm just making a video for this weekend a recession scenario in 2025, 2026. And everyone needs to be careful about this because uh, when we're getting to the recession, NASDAQ is gonna lead into the downside. Dow is gonna perform better. And uh, the reason is precious metals. Look at that, gold, new all-time high this week. So today we just break through nicely, 2507 right now. So gold is just paving its way for a fantastic scenario to 26 to 2800. So this is kind of like the scenario that I'm looking at. And we just got above this ascending reverse head and shoulder nicely if we get above today's high. So everyone needs to watch this because if we get above, uh, let me just clean this. If we get um, above today's high, then everyone needs to kind of like looking for a confirmation pullback for a fantastic rally to the upside. And the upside move can be something like this. So 26 to 2700 is coming down the low for, uh, for gold. Moving on to silver, uh, which kind of like a confirming uh, the bottom information here, I should say. 
uh, any pullback it could be kind of like a bounce. Um, I should say buying opportunity. Um, that we can get kind of like a bounce uh, pullback here and then getting back to 30 level per ounce. So this is going to be interesting scenario. I'm just looking for more upside move for silver because when it wakes up, it's going to just smoke all the other commodities and asset weekly chart tells us a great kind of like a buying opportunity getting back to here it didn't go stretch down here i was waiting for it just touched and then getting back up nicely look at the stochastic this is one of the best signal that i get from stochastic nice bullish divergence here hidden divergence and silver has lots of room to go to higher so if you don't accumulate make sure you would accumulate some silver silver mine in your portfolio because the next level the next rally is going to be exponential moving on to crude which had a negative day today as well so crude is just forming a bullish consolidation formation but i don't think it's gonna it's gonna rip up i think it's gonna fail to the downside look at the stochastic here look at macd it's just the heading down rsi even after this nice rally, RSI, that's what I'm saying. RSI doesn't have enough momentum because it's just stocking around 50%. Moving on to individual names, starting with Bitcoin. Uh, today's search was great. So still forming a nice bullish consolidation here. 3% to the upside Ethereum. The same pattern here. This is a nice a bullish consolidation as well here. Bond yield is down today. So this is the fear of recession. I believe that. We are getting to an inverted a yield curve, which is kind of like a signaling for recession is coming. And um, another uh, kind of like a confirmation is this name, TLT Treasury, hold up very well, 97, and we can go higher to 102, 103 to 105 for the next the stock market meltdown. We can go higher nicely in Treasury. VIX down tick today, but I believe VIX is pretty close to the bottom here. So. If you want to just allocate more VIX for a next spike, I think this is this is a good spot uh, spot to to get into VIX. DXC, um, 58.58% uh, to the downside. Dollar crashing today, actually, pretty hard day for dollar going down, and uh, this is signaling for 100 level dollar is coming, which is interest rate is gonna cut more or kind of like a it's kind of like a fixed scenario for this September. Magma indicator going down today. It was kind of like a mixed uh, day for technology. Apple was up a dollar seventeen cents up. Not a bad session. Apple goes into this important resistance here. So this is kind of like institutional level. Lots of sellers or supplier. Yeah, we can see actually it can go down to seventeen. So look at two hundred seventeen fifty. If it goes below this, it's going to be a red flag for Apple. But if it holds, then we're going to see some kind of like a moving upside as well. Moving on to Amazon, just the 64 cents down today. After yesterday, nice surge to the upside. It's getting to important breakdown here. Meta going down as well. So it seems like some of them are rolling down already. Microsoft, the same pattern here. If you remember, we were talking about this level. Very important. This box is here for a long time. And if it gets here... 420 to 432, 440. This area is a sell area. So Microsoft just reacted today. Not sure if it's going to continue next week, but I believe that still sellers are having upper hand here. Google, a dollar 62 cents up. Um, early session was a strong, but look at that. So there is a rejection here. This is kind of like a breakthrough to the downside. Lots of gap window and gap field. Um, still, Google, uh, Google is lagging. Netflix, a $10 uptick today. Not a bad session. It's getting back to this important um, area. Tesla, um, uptick today, but I think uh, the Tesla, this is kind of like a last drip of juice for volts. And we can see some kind of like a move to the downside. SMH, semiconductor index at 20 cents up today. Sox is down. So pretty kind of like a mixed session for semiconductors. Taiwan Semiconductor, it was negative, then coming back to the positive point, 61 cents, just close today. AMD, um, dollar 18 cents up. 
NVIDIA dollar 71 cents up. Not a bad session for NVIDIA. Everyone expecting next week earning is going to be a good for NVIDIA. Texas instrument coming down, but lower shadow actually looks good. Lamb research, the same pattern here. Doji bar seems like consolidation can just uh, give us another pop. Moving on to the XLF financial spider, they're just uh, rocking to the upside today. Bond yield is down. Financial is just roaring to the upside. KBE. The same pattern here after this rejection today, we just got back to the bullish momentum. So that's why Dow Jones can have more room to go to the upside. KRE, the same pattern here. Gold, uh, JP Morgan, nice bullish momentum. Pretty close to the all-time high. Goldman Sachs, $5.48 up. Good price action again for Goldman Bank of America. Far away from the all-time high. Still down 10% uh, down, but it can go higher. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, 75 cents up as well. So this is uh, lagging as well. This one can go to 56 to 58. Uh, gold miners, they were rocking today, 3% to the upside. Great move. Still looking for more uh, bullish consolidation and breakout for the, for them. GDXJ, the same pattern here. AEM dollar 93 cents off. Fantastic breakout AEM. So $80 for now. And uh, what's the next level that I have? Actually, pretty close to new all-time high. So we can get all the way up to new all-time high. This is rocketing to the upside. Good for shareholders. New Mountain, 91 cents up. Pretty close to breakout. Franco Nevada, $1.88 cents up. Great move for Franco. And Goldberry, 3% to the upside. Nice breakout. I believe Goldberry can go higher, higher, higher. Bullish on gold miners. XLE, which is Energy Spider. Seven cents down, XOP 56 cents down, OH 51 cents down. Uh, these names are lagging, guys, and uh, this can go lower. I know we are in a dead cat bounce, but this one can go lower. Exxon 56 cents down as well. Bullish consolidation, not a bad session, but Exxon can go higher and then coming down. Chevron 45 cents optic today, not a bad session for Chevron. This one can go to 152. So we will see how it goes. Again, make sure watch the video for a recession, kind of looking to 2025, 2026. I work on that. It's going to be a short video, but I show you some key indicator that uh, we are pretty close to the end of the party. Have a fantastic weekend. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.